Hello and welcome to another Raggy's Beers, Wines and Spirits review. That's better, I can see myself now. I've got a camcorder, it's pretty old now actually. I've had, even had to sellotape the lens open because it, for some reason it stopped opening. But it does the job, it, it only operates in 720p but you know, you know, beggars and all that. So, tonight's review. Castle Rock's Elsie Mo. Described as a glorious golden ale, characterised by a floral citrus aroma with a beautiful balance of malt and hops. Elsie Mo is an award winning golden ale brewed to a higher strength to enjoy at home. We are quietly confident after drinking this bottle conditioned version, you'll see why the remain of one of our flagship beers. Why it remains one of our flagship beers. Couldn't read the writing. I've just done a wine review and uh, my eyes. Uh, it has got Challenger, Bobeck and Aurora Hops and it's a 5% beer. And obviously it's from Nottingham Castle Rock, Nottingham Castle and all that. I used to work at Nottingham Castle as a gardener as well as the Arboretum for a lot of years. Sadly both um, parks are in a massive state of disrepair. The castle's actually been renovated, so that's got an excuse. The Arboretum is a disgrace, um, sadly, you know. And uh, this is the thing where councils up and down the country have cut back frontline services to the bone. Yeah, there's still quite a, quite a lot of managers, as there always seems to be. Lots of managers and no people on the shop floor. Um, and sadly, you know, once great parks have gone to nothing, uh, with any look, the councils will have the parks took off them, and they'll go to something like a national trust, and then I will then venture back and uh, go back to my old job, hopefully, one day, maybe. But anyway, let's review this. So Castle Rock, brewery in Nottingham do a lot of different beers. Uh, they've gone national with Harvest Pale. Um, this I think is still brewed. Yeah, still brewed at uh, Nottingham. Whereas Harvest Pale, their flagship beer, is brewed via Marston's. And the alcohol content has gone from 3.7 to 4.3. Now, normally, I would be a fan of that because I prefer stronger beers. But something... I thought I was dropping it then. Something is missing with the taste. Whether it's because it's not Nottingham water. I, I don't know. Um, but we'll get back to that in a minute. Yeah, it's gone from 3.7 to 4.3. and lost something in, in that change. So... Good carbonation, good lacing, white head, amber body, golden amber body, on the nose. <sighs> you certainly can smell them hops on the nose. It's not citrus hops, it's just hoppy. Now, Castle Rock, Harvest Pale is their flagship beer, as I've said, a champion beer of Britain, and a very good beer at that. Uh, especially the 3.7% version. Get it on cask if you can. Uh, Elsie Mo, another great beer. Kiss Me Kate, they did for Prince William. And that was another stunning beer. When it was in the shops, it was great. They need to bring another one out, really. Um, Screech Owl, another fantastic beer. 5.5%. Get it on tap. Brilliant. Oh. How many? Um, yeah, Screech Owl, definitely one of the best as well. Always have that when I go in the uh, the maze, which is the former Forest Tavern on Mansfield Road in Nottingham, when we do the pub crawl into town. Haven't done that said pub crawl for a good year now. Uh, fell out with the mates that he used to have. Oh well, we all venture on, don't we? Yeah, well, not exactly fell out, but they've certainly not got in contact, which is sad, you know, when you've got lifelong friends who all of a sudden 
just don't get in contact but uh, you know one day they'll regret it I suppose who knows so so there's hops on the aroma there's hops in the taste but not citrus hops conventional hops for me anyway Definitely a maltiness as well. Sadly, I'm still getting some of that Sauvignon Blanc um, in the taste. I've had this many, many times in bottle. Uh, you know, one of my favourites actually was, anyway. And uh, I've had it many times from the cask as well, because obviously being from Nottingham, go to Nottingham pubs, first thing you look for is, you know, you support your own brands, don't you? Um, would like to, you know, there's, um, I must go out actually soon and have a, have a, have a drinking um, Arnold uh, ne near where I am. And because uh, look, we're lucky that we've got a lot of uh, close, uh, breweries close to us. Um, we've got Castle Rock in Nottingham, Magpie in Nottingham, um, Lincoln Green in Hocknell, Blue Monkey in Giltbrook, and that's just a fraction. You know, it seems these days that everybody is bringing out their own um, microbreweries and that. It's fantastic, really. You know, if you can keep it up as a business, absolutely fantastic. And it looks like the government's capitulating, doesn't it, on this uh, Brexit. Ooh. Focus. Castle Rock, LC Mo. That's better. So on rate beer, it's got a rating of 3.2 out of 5. And that's from 93 ratings. And it says cask and bottle, regular, unfiltered. Um, someone here, 3.6 out of 5. Pours a light golden colour. Fruity aroma, pleasant, zesty taste, gentle, bitter aftertaste, a good first pint of the day. Another one, 3.7. Enjoyable light gold nail, good zesty fruit flavour, a little sweetness and a subtle malt too. Thank God there was malt. Somebody else said I thought it was the only one. Finishes satisfying hops and a bit of oiliness to coat the mouth. And uh, final one, 3.6. Earthy, fruity aroma, pale golden, thin, creamy, white head, excellent, fine lacing, earthy, biscuit, fruity flavour, creamy and sweetish. So, he's covered the bases there quite a bit. Definitely a creaminess. You know when you're taking it and you've got that frothy layer. Definitely a creaminess coming from that. And that zestiness, yeah, I can see where they're saying that now. I thought it would be taste buds because my taste buds are off. I've still got a cold. It's the remnants of it, but I drank a coffee earlier and the coffee just did not taste like normal coffee. So you need something. I, and then I did a white wine review just five minutes ago. And that, because obviously the Sauvignon Blanc um, got a good strength of taste to it, it cut through the cold. But this, because it's a beer, and not the strongest of flavoured beers, it's struggling to cut through that. So it's not as easy to digest the um, what I'm tasting. What I will say, um, this would be a beer that I would go, you know, years ago, <clears throat> four or five years ago, It'd be one of the beers that I'd, I'd seen the likes of Asda and the first beers to go in were that and Harvest Pale. Nowadays, my taste buds have changed. Um, 
I now drink a much wider spectrum. I mean, years ago, I wouldn't even touch wheat beers. And I've got to do a review of Hogard and the white beer because I'm wondering if it will taste any different to me. Because last time I did it, it tasted foul. Uh, I'd even drank it in a pub about nine years ago now. And uh, it was disgusting. But then I did, I, I had Duval a few weeks ago, uh, a month or so, a couple of months ago. And that, again, that tasted disgusting. And yet when I did the review, my taste buds have changed that much that it actually tasted really nice. So, like with wines, when you first drink wines, your taste buds think it's vinegar. Um, and then as you progress, it changes. You know, and that'll be the same with every different type of alcohol you can get. You know, your taste buds change once you start drinking it. Unless you're one of these people who can drink anything and straight away you love it, you know. Which is, uh, I'm certainly not one of them type of people. So yeah, there's a zestiness to it. There's definitely a maltiness to it. Definitely a bit of hops. Um, it's nice. It's not outstanding, but it is nice, you know. There's definitely a lot going on, you know. It's not something where you, it's bland and like a bitter, where you're just drinking it and, you, you know, it's, it's dead quaffable. This, there's a lot to try and pick out. Even now, this cold I've got, it's not doing my taste buds any good. But I can still pick out different flavours, the hops, the citrus, the floral, very light citrus. Zestiness. So, out of five, hmm. Difficult. Um, in the years I've been drinking it, obviously the craft beer revolution and new beers coming out, you know, an evolution of my own taste buds has changed. Five or six years ago, this would have been one of my top beers. Today, I'm going to give it um, a 4.2 out of 5. A very respectable drink, just not sadly in my top 10 beers anymore. It's okay, it's uh, it's better than the run of the mill stuff you get out of there, you know, it's, but it's not quite, um, hits the spot where it used to it years ago. And surely I'm not the only one who finds that with beers that they used to love and that your taste buds have changed that much that the same beers just don't taste as good anymore. Or there's another reason for it. Who knows? And uh, is it me or is this screen blurry? Um, and that's all I have to say on the subject, really. Yeah, it's a strange one. Thanks for watching. See you soon.